Okay, I am recording. I think. Let's see. Welcome to uh, Uncloaked Illusions. I'm Chris Anthony. I do apologize about not being able to get any content out lately. I've been dealing with some family issues, also, sort of taking a little mini vacay and uh, trying to take a break from, uh, you know, the political realm. And uh, even the social realm to an extent. And it's difficult, especially when you <laughs> have all of this uh, great information that comes about on a daily basis every single day. There's the immigration uh, situation. There is also the Helsinki in Finland. Uh, be the meeting between Putin and also between Donald Trump which I absolutely enjoyed. I just think that, you know, the media, the mainstream media goes completely berserk on any kind of uh, attempts that Trump makes with, with any, any, uh, any leaders from any countries that they oppose. Uh, however, I think it's pretty telling that they did not cover the fact that Putin mentioned something about the $400 million that was funneled to the uh, Clinton campaign. You didn't hear anything about that, and we will talk about that in a later video, because I did a little um, analysis on it, and I do want to touch bases on it, and also get caught up on what's been going on lately as of now, in real time for the most part. But I do want to speak about the view situation with Judge Janine Perot on it because I love her. And I just love the way how every single time you see a conservative uh, speaking on a show or promoting anything are always surrounded with a plethora of insane in the membrane liberals. It's always one against three, four, five, six, whatever. But this conservative always tends to win the argument because, again, they, they present facts. And liberals base everything on emotions. Everything on emotions and lack of education or information of any situation. They're always seeming to be misinformed about everything. Well, needless to say, I watched this interview and, and I love that Judge... Janine was able to maintain her composure, to maintain her gracefulness, because this is what conservative people have a tendency to do, is to not allow themselves to get emotional about any kind of topic, especially when they know exactly what they're talking about. And they allow the the competitor or the uh, the person that they're having this conversation with or at least attempting to have a conversation with it always turns into something else to basically make fools of themselves by becoming overly emotional about things that they really don't know much about but you know they heard certain things from certain new syndicates and they just run with it and you know, we got an opportunity to see, which we see on a regular basis with Whoopi Goldberg. The rest of those ladies, I don't even know their names because I think they're idiots anyways. Uh, you got an opportunity to see her uh, kind of <laughs> break down in a sense or become hysterical. And, uh, you know, yes, yeah, she is suffering from uh, TDS, the Trump derangement syndrome. Yes, we all know this. She got so irate that she literally cut the segment uh, uh, maybe a, a minute or a few seconds before it was supposed to uh, end. And then she comes back on to not even apologize, but to point out that she doesn't have any Trump derangement syndrome and that she doesn't become hysterical. And she did everything that she claimed she wasn't doing, which was she was hysterical. You know, they fucking go insane when you start spewing factual information to them. I don't understand why. And I find it to be very hilarious that, 
you know, not only as a, as a, a black person, you see this in black people that are still tied into the uh, democratic plantation. And I just think that it's it's very telling. And I think people should look at this to see exactly what the Democratic Party, you know, operatives stand for. And, and also the audience. I wanted to point something out about the audience, how they just seem to mind the planes because I'm in Seattle right now and we do live around a uh, airport. I love the fact that the audience just seems to be as clueless as the host of The View because they will just basically applaud for things based on what the host say without knowing any any kind of information or having any kind of details or facts about whether or not this is this is factually based or it's just their opinion for the most part which in most instances it is just their opinion and you know as Ben Shapiro said you know facts don't care about your feelings and with your liberals that's exactly what it is they're very emotionally driven, you know, illiterate and also brain dead. Well, lobotomized in a sense. People. I you know, like my the garden, it's beautiful. Might even walk down there a little bit. But um, needless to say, I was appalled by the entire interview they bring Judge Janine on there just to kind of attempt to ravage her, but because she's very intellectually driven. She is a, a woman of grace. She didn't allow them to uh, get the upper hand. But you know, when you're yelling, when you're, when you're irate about things, when you're hysterical about things, you think you're winning, but in truth, you're making yourself obviously look like the fool. Now, I never really thought much of Whippy Goldberg being that she is a huge hypocrite. You know, this is the same woman that had uh, uh, multiple marriages fail, I believe. And I think a couple of them was with white guys, if not all were. But she loves black people so fucking much. And, uh, you know, the other panelists, uh, I don't know much about them. I see them and I get annoyed with their their rhetoric because that's all it pretty much is a bunch of bimbos that are overpaid you know to spew their opinion as if it is fact uh give me your opinion about the view and the right you saw it i hope that you did and if you have not i encourage you to go look at it and uh <laughs> get their views um when it when it's something that has to collide with with facts it doesn't hold up whatsoever, which I I basically stopped watching it. Never really was a fan of it, but I would catch it here and there because I feel like their views were primarily initially dealing with celebrities' uh, mishaps and, and their lives. And then all of a sudden, they became more interested in, you know, the political realm domestically and foreign. And yet again, these people know absolutely nothing about foreign policy. They know nothing about you know, the the political, uh, domestic uh, stuff that's going on. But, you know, they want to, I guess they want to hold on to their, their fame the best way they know how. And right now, the most talked about topics is, is anything dealing with Donald Trump. So now all of a sudden they're political. You know, you didn't hear them scave on about Obama and his administration and their many failures when you know when when he was in the the White House you didn't hear them and I do believe they were I do believe that the view was um what was in I, I guess it, it was operative when Bush was president as well you didn't hear too much about that but oh they hate Donald Trump and I love every bit of it because, mind you, I'll say this. I don't agree with everything that Donald Trump does. I don't agree with some of the policies. But uh, he has done more in almost a two-year period than Obama did in eight. And it's just amazing that you, you, you mention this to people. You start to, uh, 
you start to lay out the facts for them and they are still in denial about this. They are still in denial. And then you start to lay out the facts of what Obama did not do for the American people, let alone black people. And they're still in denial about it. Okay, that's that's a, a, a syndrome. That's a derangement syndrome. It doesn't necessarily have to be Trump, but... It's something that clouds the mind from being able to see things clearly. Um, Chris Anthony and I just wanted to speak about that kind of get myself back into the forefront of being able to push out some videos. There are still things coming. I'm just postponing it for the moment. And uh, hey, give me your opinion about this. If you haven't watched the uh, view watch it and give me your opinion about it let me know what your perspectives on of of the broken perspectives of the 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 host and you know just laugh at also the one conservative that they do have on there uh megan mccain i believe you john mccain's uh daughter and and mind you she she tries to be factual or for the most part she is however you know we know her fucking dad's a traitor as well but Needless to say, you know, they're always ganging up against her and, you know, people in the audience. Again, this is what we're seeing a bunch of serfs, you know, basically people who who don't have minds of their own. They're just, you know, fitting into the system that, you know, they were pegged to and <laughs> they will literally like not even applaud or not even give her a fair opportunity when she presents a fact to them and and then it seems like every single time you present a fact to a goddamn liberal or a democrat they go insane okay it's it's beautiful i love to watch it you know that's why if i have any kind of debate or i have any kind of conversation and i a topic does come up if i know anything about it i'm going to present the facts that i do know and if i know nothing about it i'll ask the person that's engaging in that conversation with me, give me about 10 minutes and I'll be right back with you. I can look into it and, and we can have a conversation about it, a fair conversation. And I'll, for the most part, allow them to inform me and to discover. I'm not going into, <laughs> as one would say, I'm to a, a gunfight with a knife. If, if I know I don't have the information, if I know that I know very little about it, I'm not going to even try to engage and allow myself to be uh, looked at as an idiot or a fool. I'm going to uh, equip myself with some information that I can carry on a conversation because for the most part, I'm going to I'm going to approach it more in a philosophical manner where I'm just going to ask questions to understand. And especially if something doesn't make any sense to me, I use the Socratic method. Never realized that I was using that, but... I would use the Socratic method to basically help you to realize that maybe there's some flaws and some uh, contradictions in your own uh, perspectives. Needless to say, as I've said before, go ahead, look at that video if you haven't. If you have, give me your perspective on it. I think these women are total fucking bimbos. I don't understand how any of them have a show based on being called the view because we don't really need to know their views because we know their views are not factually based and it's all opinionated it's dogmatic it's emotionally driven and um, I don't think you can make a fair decision based off of emotions and I'm Chris Anthony I'll